Today we're gonna have a little fun and we are gonna go over the specs most likely to be busted after taking a look at all the phase 3 runes, okay? First of all, and this is crazy because we only got to see one rune for it, that is gonna be the Resto Druid, that's right, let's take a look at this, this is Efflorescence, engrave your casters with Efflorescence, every time you swift men so buddy, you turn into a bunch of AoE healing for free into the party, okay? This is deceptively huge, because if you take a look at all the potential builds, okay, I'm just making up like a level 40 build right here, this is what you would be taking uh, anyway, uh, because this is all the good resto talents. Now, the thing is you're level 35 and you're kinda stuck here, because like, there is absolutely nothing good you can take here, there is absolutely nothing good you can take here, omen, maybe, do you wanna do that? Uh, the only really actually good thing is nature's reach, so you can throw rats better, but that's pretty much it. So, having a, a reason to go Swiftman, to actually go deep into the Resto Tree, you can do something like this, reduce your threat, get some cast time here, there you go, you got Swiftman. So now you got a, a decent way of using your talents, of course you're also gonna be taking Improved Rat, uh, oh wait, Phase 3, because you are doing Rats because Fury of Stone Rage is broken, of course you're gonna be doing that, and you got 5 points to spare, these 5 points are still gonna be wasted, uh, you can take uh, Nature's Grasp if you like it, you can take, I don't, I don't know, uh, Nature's Focus, it doesn't really matter, the last 5 talents are wasted, no matter what you do. But this looks a lot better than not going Swiftman and trying to go some sort of weird build. Like at level 60, at level 60 you can go here for Nature's Grace because this gives you like a super fast cast time on, on heals. But right now you don't have that. At level 50 you are not gonna be able to reach this and get all the good resto talents. So being able to go Swiftman is a huge upgrade. If I were to bet on a class that is gonna be able to solo heal a raid next phase like a maniac, it is probably going to be the Resto Druid. The potential output for this kind of healing is insane. Also remember guys that Life Bloom pops whether you dispel it or it pops normally, so if you're doing a Swift Mend, you're dispelling it, so that means it's gonna pop. So not only you get free AoE healing uh, when you do this on the tank, you also control now a very effective emergency heal, a very strong triple life bloom instant heal on you, so you are now a very strong tank healer too. Druids are likely to be the highest output healer, the top in the meters healer, the best AoE healer, which they already were, the wild growth is broken and now you have a second one apparently. They are the best base load healer for the tank and now they might be one of the best snap healers too. They have everything, they can do everything at the same time because swift mending your tank is gonna heal the whole raid so you can do AoE and tank healing at the same time now. Resto Druids are gonna be even more busted. Next class is a class that I successfully predicted that it was gonna be busted this phase and look and behold it got busted this phase and that is the Warlock. Now, I know that Reddit will not shut up about this rune that makes your dots crit, so of course, the rune that is broken is the opposite one, not that one. This Reddit, uh, are, are you surprised that Reddit got it wrong? The sad part is Reddit are the people that Blizzard listens to for balance problems, so yeah, we're kinda screwed. But anyway, okay, take a look at this and think for a minute. Conflagrate gives you 30% haste for 10 seconds. Conflagrate has a cooldown of 10 seconds, so now you can have 100% uptime on 30% haste, 30% faster cast time. Of course the correlation is there, 30% faster cast time, that's 30% more spells, that is about 30% more damage. Meanwhile, back uh, pandemic here, okay? Your crits from your dots can, can crit. I did the math on a previous video, I'm, I'm just gonna do the TLDR here. Let's be generous, let's assume that a Warlock has 30% crit. Because of how the crit modifier on spells works, that means that his dots, if they are able to crit, they are gonna do, on average, 15% more damage, at best in slot, okay? So this only affects your dots, and it is 15% extra damage. This right here affects any spell that you can cast, because you can cast more of them and it is 30%. Also this is right here the 15% on average that's assuming you got 30% crit, that's assuming you got a really good gear. What if you got no gear? There you go. 
Backdraft. It scales very well and it doesn't care if you got gear or not either. So it is both good for the new player and the very geared player. So no, I don't think the, the Shadow uh, Spec Warlock, either the Monology or either uh, Affliction, I don't think either of them are gonna be doing very good right now. But also, another cool thing, you know, uh, you might take a look at this, the Felguard, okay? We are getting the Felguard. The Felguard is from TVC, it's a pet from TVC. Basically, it, it has an AOE ability, that's the cool part about it. It has like a cleaving thing. So now, Warlocks are gonna get even better at AOE. As a matter of fact, the Bracers rune, they have a two AI abilities. You can also get Immolation Aura. This is a passive you put on yourself. This was the Demonology Warlock ability in Rato the Lich King, actually. And you just put this on yourself and it is passive AOE. It is like a Consecrate on top of you, basically. So now Tank Warlocks are gonna get insane AOE threat, very similar to what a Shaman or a Paladin can get with the Totems or the Consecration. So... I am very bullish also on tank warriors, tank warlocks, sorry. <laughs> so tank warlocks are gonna get really strong and DPS warlocks are gonna get even stupider. So yeah, if I were to guess guys, this number right here, 30%, they are gonna roll this back, okay? 30% is way too much, okay? If this was 15%, I would still take it over the pandemic, okay? Uh, like if it was nominally the same amount, I would still take this one because it affects my cast, and this one only affects my dots. Dots are half my damage. Spells are 100% of my damage. Also, fire is stronger anyway, and you really don't benefit from pandemic if you're fire match. You only immolate is like one that matters. But right here, if you're going for backdraft and you're fire, this is the best one anyway. Even if it was 5%, I would take it. Not to mention, if you are fire, you're stacking crit anyway, but if you are a shadow spec, dot spec, you don't really want crit anyway, so you're kinda screwing your stats just to be able to abuse a pandemic, so it's kinda a bit the purpose, you know, like, the, you're getting damage on this side, but to get damage on this side, you gotta sacrifice stats on this side, so it kinda evens out, really, it's not like you gain much. Now, there is one use for Pandemic, if you really look at it, and that is buffing the Rogue. Oh yeah, buffing the Rogue. Let's take a look at this. Honor amongst thieves. Every time somebody in the party crits, they get a combo point. Okay? This has an internal cooldown of one second. This is really stupid, okay? If you got infinite combo points, you got pretty much infinite damage. I don't think your average rogue is gonna be able to abuse this very well, but if you are intentionally stacking a group for it, like somebody that crits a lot, putting like a bunch of good DPSers on it, this thing is gonna be really stupid. For your average player, it might not be a big deal. But if you are stacking a group intentionally and intentionally abusing this, you are gonna see a lot of damage, okay? So basically, this is gonna make so uh, the top rogues in the world are gonna be right there on the top of the leaderboards, your average rogue, probably not much. The next spec that I want to talk about, actually class in general, is gonna be the super annoying priest, okay? Even in PvE and PvP, this is gonna be pretty, pretty annoying. And that is the Divine Ages, okay? Every time your heal crits, you create a shield for 30% of the amount healed. This is so annoying. Of course in PvP it's annoying because if you're a warrior and you try to whack somebody and they get a shield all the time, that sucks. But it's even worse than that, okay? Shields are the ultimate annoyance to a healer in your raid because if sniping the heal is annoying, okay, how about sniping the heal before the damage goes through? That's what a shield does, okay? It prevents damage from happening. We are going to need new adapted healing meters to take into account how the shields are performing, so Overall, if you get a, a normal meter, it's probably not gonna show like the healer is doing a lot, but right here, this is insanely good. Also, it is gonna, like, for the healer side, of course, it is gonna prevent overhealing. Because even if you overheal, this damage is not gonna be wasted with the shield. This is very similar to the Discipline Priest in Rato the Lich King when they removed the internal cooldown of uh, Power War Shield, and they were just spamming shields all day. This is gonna be just like that again. So they are gonna be very strong, even if the logs do not actually show it. Another really cool thing that they are getting is another crit related rune, let's take a look at that one. Right here, Surge of Light, every time a spell crits, that makes it so your flash heal or your binding heal are gonna be instant. So not only they are getting like a, a super scaling rune that is gonna prevent damage from happening, every time they crit at the same time they are gonna make their next spell 
So yeah, if they stack enough crit, they are basically gonna keep the tank shielded 24-7. So yeah, I do not see how any other spec could possibly uh, beat this as a tank healer, okay? The priest is gonna be the strongest tank healer in the game, I have no doubt about it. I was kinda hoping this priest would be out of the meta by now, but it's not gonna, okay? Blizzard will not allow priest to be bad because all the girls that play this game are gonna quit. I'm just kidding, there's a lot of boys that play girls online. And the last pick I wanna talk about is gonna be the Red Paladin, okay? Let's take a look at this. Your Consecration damage can crit, so that's very similar to the Warlock dots. The Consecration is a dot, and now it crits. So that's gonna give them a, a really decent amount of crit. But the cool part here is that Exorcism, Holy Shock, Holy Rat, and Consecration are gonna be gaining additional critical strike chains equal to your melee critical strike chains, okay? Let's the, the think for a minute. This doesn't mean that their spell crit is gonna turn into melee crit. That means that they are gonna get their spell crit and melee crit at the same time for their spells. Of course, no, no sane person gets critical spell chains on a paladin, that's stupid. But if you have intellect, intellect turns into crit. They have like, I don't know, 5% base crit chains, so they are getting like 5% uh, crit chains plus the melee crit chains. That's really, really strong. They are also... Uh, Gideon, remember, you got some pieces of gear in the race that give you critical chance for, for all spells and abilities, okay? So this is gonna help a little more because I didn't explain myself very well, okay? This is, for example, a male piece you can get in Nomergan. Increases your chance to get all critical strikes with all spells and attacks by 1%. And if you take a look at the tooltip, critical by 1 all. Let's see if Blizzard actually thought this through and they actually uh, put a workaround on it before they messed up the whole thing. But the way I see it, uh, the code, the game doesn't think that you're getting like 1% quote unquote general crit, let's call it that the stat. Okay, I think the game shows things that you got one spell crit and one melee crit separately. So if you can stack them like this rune, the, the amount of crit they are getting is gonna be like double. That's, that's insanely stupid. Also, if you take a look at the other rune they are getting for the other slot, that is gonna be Purifying Power, that reduces the cooldown of Exorcism and Holy Rat by half, and Holy Rat can now cast at any target, so this is really strong because it's like an AoE that does Holy Damage, which can now also crit with all your melee damage. So yeah, uh, uh, the Paladin became strong because it was able to ignore armor damage ever since the 27th of February changes, right? Uh, they made it so Crusader Strike is holy damage instead of physical damage. That's what catapulted the Red Paladin really high because it's ignored armor. As you guys know, there is no holy resistance in the game, okay? That's why I'm concerned about this. There is no holy resistance, so it means that aside from your miss chance, of course, you're getting full damage on everything you do every time. No armor reduction, no nothing. So when you get a crit on your holy spells, you don't get just crit, you get like an insane amount of value for it. So I think the Red Paladin is gonna get really strong. Take a look at it. Subscribe, leave a like, join the Discord, and thank you for watching.